All right, so today we are going to review how to solve quadratics with square roots, which is then going to naturally lead us into something called completing the square, which is our next method of solving quadratic equations. So um, up at the top in the factor corner, that one is for you to do, solve by factoring, just like we always do up in that space. So example one, review. We're solving using square roots. So to remind you the steps for solving by square roots, step one is to get the squared term. So that would either be x squared or x minus h squared alone. So sometimes it's just a plain x squared, sometimes it's an x minus h squared. So whichever one it is, get that part all by itself. Then we are going to square root both sides. Remember that you have to put in that plus or minus whenever we square root both sides and then we get x alone sorry that doesn't look like an x get x alone and simplify if needed sometimes that's already going to be done for us but other times we may need to do that so in a it's not an x minus h squared it's not a quantity it's just x squared itself so in order to get x squared by itself, the first thing I'm going to do is add 32 to both sides. Sorry about that. Then I'm going to add, once I add the 32 to both sides, these ones cancel. So I end up with 2x squared equals 32. x squared is still not alone because that 2 that's multiplied there needs to go. So I undo multiplying by dividing. That gives me x squared equals 16. So the x squared term is alone. That means I'm ready for step two, which is to square root both sides. When I do that, the square root and the squared cancel each other out. Again, notice my stars. Don't forget to put in the plus or minus. Square root of 16 does simplify. That gives me 4. So x equals plus or minus 4 would be my solutions here. All right, let's try another. To get the x squared term alone in b, the first thing that I would do is add 24 to both sides. So x squared equals 24. The squared term is now alone, so square root both sides. The squared and the square root undo each other. So then I put in my plus or minus, and I need to simplify the square root of 24. Now 24 is not a perfect square. So that means I can't just write a number like I did over here. I'm going to need to do a factor tree to simplify that radical because everything should be in simplest radical and fraction form always, unless the directions tell you otherwise. So one set of factors for 24 is six and four. Four is two times two. Six is three times two. Those are all primes, so the factor tree is done. These two have matching outfits, so they can go as one couple to the matching outfit party. So take those two, one of them outside. Then what's left inside? Well, this three and this two don't have anyone to match with. So multiply those together and that gives me a six on the inside. So my simplified answer here is two radical six. Again, make sure you've got that plus and minus at the front. All right, one more for review of solving with square roots for you. Here, this time it is an x minus h squared. So x minus 2 squared, that's what I'm trying to get alone. Do not, you do not want to multiply that all out. Just leave it x minus h squared and get it by itself. 
So I'm going to add 36 to both sides. That gives me x minus 2 squared equals 36. Now that the squared term is by itself, I'm going to square root both sides. Again, the square root and the squared undo each other, so I'm just left with the x minus 2 on the left side. On the right side, I always need that plus or minus. And then I simplify. Square root of 36 is a whole number, so I just make that 6. Now, step three, this is the first time where it isn't just simplifying. I actually have to get x alone. x is not by itself. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides to get x alone. We've done one like this together before. These are two separate problems. I have positive 6 plus 2, which is 8. And then the minus on the bottom, that's negative 6 plus 2, which would be negative 4. So when you have this type of problem, you can't just slap a plus or minus in front of the answer. You can't just say plus or minus 8 because the other solution isn't the opposite of 8 um, because of this added 2 on the outside. All right, so you're going to have some practice on your own of solving with square roots as well, just to bring that back to the front of your mind. When we know how to solve by square roots, we can then naturally learn completing the square. So in order to complete the square, we have to create a perfect square trinomial. Or remember that we abbreviate those oftentimes as PSTs. We create a PST, we factor it, and then we use what we did with square roots. So it'll be a little like the one we just did in example 1C when we're done. So before we actually go to all the steps of completing the square, we're going to practice just making PSTs. So the value that we typically use to make a PST is the B value divided by 2 squared. Remember, when I say B value, we're referring to AX squared plus BX plus C. We're referring to a standard form quadratic. So in this case, it's the C that I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find. It says write the value we can add to make the binomial a PST. Then we're going to factor it. So the C is what I'm missing. That's what I'm trying to find. B in this case is 8. So I'm going to do 8 divided by 2 and then square it. That should be what goes in my blank spot. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. Now this should, if I've done the B divided by 2 squared correctly, it should factor as a PST, which is a single parenthesis squared. Remember that the pattern for factoring PSTs is square root of the front term goes in the front, so square root x squared is x. Sine of the middle goes in the middle, so plus in this case on the middle term. And then square root of the back goes in the back. And if we were to multiply out x plus 4 times x plus 4, we would indeed get x squared plus 8x plus 16. So that's how we know that it's right. All right, we're going to do another here in part B. So again, looking for this mystery value that's going to make this into a perfect square trinomial. So in this case, my B is negative 12. I have to divide that by 2 and then square it. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36. So then factor it. It's a PST, so single parentheses squared. Square root of x squared is x. Sine of the middle this time is a minus. And the square root of 36 is 6. So x minus 6 squared. All right, now for the real test. Once we know how to solve by square roots and we know how we can make our own PSTs, we now have everything we need to successfully complete the square. So as per usual, I've written out the steps that we would take each time 
in order to solve by completing the square. The first step is collect the variable terms on the left and the constant on the right. So this is different than when I'm trying to solve by factoring. When I'm solving by factoring, I want it equal to zero. Here I want variables on the left and the constant on the right. So in part A, the only thing that's in the wrong place is this positive four. So I'm gonna move it because it's a constant. It should go to the right side. When I move it, I have to do so with opposite operations. So subtract four on both sides. I now, I'm going to have negative 15, so it's x squared minus 16x equals negative 15 on the right side. So that's step one. Step two, place blanks on both sides. So I kind of modeled that in the example before, but now we're not just going to have a blank after that x term. We're going to have one on both sides of the equation because now that there's an equal sign, because there wasn't one up here, no equal sign, it was just an expression. Now that we have an equal sign, we have to keep that equation balanced. So whatever I do on the left, I also have to do to the right. So as you might expect, what goes in that blank is exactly what I just did in the step before, b divided by two squared. So negative 16 divided by two, and square it. So negative 16 divided by 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 squared is positive 64. Whatever I do to one side, I also do to the other. We're done with step 3 already. We're ready for step 4. Step 4, factor the left side PST. So single parenthesis squared, square root of x squared is x, sine of the middle is minus, Square root of 64 is 8. On the right side, we need to simply combine our like terms. So in this case, that means that we have negative 15 plus 64. So that's the same as 64 minus 15, which gives us 49. So that's the end of step 4. Step 5 now looks just like solving with square roots. So I've got an x minus h squared term. It's all by itself. So I can now square root both sides because the square root and the squared are going to undo each other. That gives me x minus 8. On the right side, I know I need that plus or minus. Square root of 49 needs simplified. It comes out to 7. And then add 8 to both sides, remembering that when you do that, this is two separate answers positive 7 plus 8, which is 15, and then negative 7 plus 8, which is positive 1. Remember, anytime you are solving an equation, when you get your answer, you can plug it back in and see if it works. If your answer is correct, it's going to produce a true statement in your equation. Okay, so next... I am going to show you one more using all five of those steps. So collect variable terms on the left and constants on the right. So here I've got a couple things that need to move. This five needs to move over to the right side because it's a constant. And then this 2x needs to move to the left side because it is a variable. So. I use those opposite operations. So on the left, these canceled. So I have x squared minus 2x. On the left, those are my variable terms. On the right, I've got negative 5 plus 7, which is 2. So step one is now finished. Step two, create blanks on each side. So add those blanks on both sides. Everything else about the equation stays the same. Now I am going to create my PST by completing the square. So B divided by 2 squared. In this case, B is negative 2. So negative 2 divided by 2 squared. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I also do to the other. 
So there's step three. Step four, factor the left side. So I know it's going to be a PST. Square root of x squared is x. Sine of the middle is a minus. Square root of 1 is 1. On the right side, 2 plus 1 is 3. Now, solve for the variable by taking square roots and isolating. So the squared term is by itself, so I can undo the squared term by square rooting both sides. Gives me x minus 1 on the left. On the right, I need that plus or minus. Square root of 3, that's not a perfect square, so I can't write a whole number. And since 3 is prime, I can't even break it down with a factor tree. It just stays plus and minus radical 3. So then I need to add 1 to both sides, which brings up something that is very important. Remember, because we did adding and subtracting radicals several different times throughout this year. Remember, you cannot combine a plain old number with a radical. This is a whole number. This is an irrational number. They're not like terms, so I can't combine them like I did over here in example 3a. I need to leave those separate. So it's just going to be 1 plus or minus radical 3. You can leave it like that since they're not like terms. Or if you prefer to write them out separately, you could write 1 plus radical 3 as one of your solutions and then write the other one separate, 1 minus radical 3. Either way, it's two solutions. Um, they just are not like terms because one's irrational and one is not. All right, so we've gone back through. You can go back and replay the examples if you need to to review completing the square. Um, do not forget to do your factor corner way up here. So factor corner is solving by factoring. On the back, you've got three practice where it's just solving with square roots. Um, then two practice that just asks you to fill in the blank um, with the value that would make a PST. And then two that ask you to actually do the entirety of the completing the square steps. At the end, we've got three um, released OST type items for you to practice getting ready for that. As always, please let me know if you have any questions.